Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, as promised, I am going to follow up on my Valentine's Day uh, episode about the love stories on the Waltons with uh, a look at some of the um, unsuccessful little romances along the path to each of the Waltons finding their happy ending. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. Although John and Olivia were the perfect couple together, there were moments along the way during the series when we did see them either be tempted or have somebody else make a play for them. With John, when he went away to the boarding house in the departure, um, he didn't share a romance with Miss Champion, but she definitely admired him. And had he been the straying type, that would have been a real opportunity for John. But of course, that was not who John was. Also, we find out in the prophecy that John had been engaged in high school to Rachel Stubblefield, and she greets him at the door with a kiss. So uh, again, a part of John's past, but nothing that in any way threatened his relationship with Olivia. And then there was the episode, The Torch, when Olivia was away in Arizona recovering from tuberculosis, where uh, his old flame, Callie, made a play for him. And he, there was uh, some temptation there for John, but he never did stray from Olivia. Now for Olivia, she had moments uh, when Oscar Cockrell in The Prize came back and was clearly still interested in Olivia. And I think she she did a moment of what if, because Oscar was very successful, but I don't think it ever really tempted her. Same thing with the art professor uh, in um, the romance, Joshua, who wanted Olivia to run away with him and actually kissed her, much to her surprise and shock. And I think she realized that perhaps she did send signals that were misunderstood, not that she was interested in him in a romantic way, just that she loved the whole aspect of studying the art and the excitement of all of that, which then led Joshua to think that it meant something else, which it did not. For Esther and Zeb, Zeb was forever flirting with uh, Miss Mamie, Miss Emily, Zuleika Dunbar. I mean, he flirted with all the pretty girls and ladies along the way. But again, never anything that was of any threat to that wonderful relationship. After Zeb died, there was a point when Esther's old beau came back and, uh, you know, she actually went on a date, but ultimately the thought of Zeb was forever there for her. So those two were basically mated for life. John Boy had a lot of romances over, over the seasons. His first started with Marsha Woolery, uh, who we saw in a number of episodes, and that was quite a tumultuous relationship. <laughs> and Marcia just took him for a ride, and uh, it went all over the place. But I think it was part of growing up for John Boy. Uh, but he, he learned a lot about women because of Marcia. Then there was Jenny, and she had a couple of episodes, the love story and the Thanksgiving story, and that was one that many of you felt was one of the perfect fits for John Boy. So they really were quite adorable together. Uh, then there was uh, Sarah Simmons, played by Sissy Spacek in The Townie. And of course, she wanted John Boy to run away with her. But John Boy was interested, but not that interested. <laughs> in The Thoroughbred, Selena, played by the wonderful Kathleen Quinlan. She made a play for John Boy. And, and uh, I think what John Boy liked was that she wasn't a snob, despite the fact that she had money. She she liked John Boy for who he was, but she also was a challenging personality for John Boy. This has seemed to be a, a pattern with John Boy's romances, <laughs> but he all of these relationships led to him really understanding what was right for him. In the ring, Audrey uh, was someone that he wasn't quite sure about until she turned out to be uh, really uh, just such a help in taking the blame and going after the ring and turning out to be have so much more substance than John Boy gave her credit for. Uh, the spoilers, Alicia, Linda Pearl, came in and made a play for John Boy, uh, but she was just, she was more than John Boy knew what to handle at that point in time. 
but he certainly found her attractive. Um, there was um, the marathon where um, we first meet Daisy. And I love Daisy and John Boy together. I think that was one of my favorite relationships. And they, they had that bonding over the marathon dance. And then later on, they did get engaged. Um, and ultimately, they did not marry, obviously. Um, we found out that Daisy had a child out of wedlock, which wasn't, I think, a deal breaker for John Boy, but she decided to go a different direction in her life at that time. I was glad that she came back in and did other episodes and lived in Mary Ellen's house for a period of time, which was which was fun. Deirdre Lenahan was wonderful to have around. We had Madeline in The Woman, the older woman that um, I think uh, teaches John Boy a thing or two. Uh, she was uh, someone that he was really smitten with. And, and because she was older, I think it, it brought a different element to John Boy's previous romantic relationships. Uh, then he went on to Bobby Strom, the wing walker, who really, really made a play for John Boy, but he was sort of in the, oh yeah, love him and leave him kind of phase and, and wasn't really serious about Bobby and really kind of broke her heart, which was sort of sad, but uh, he was young. There you go. We'll, we'll pass it off to young and lots to learn still. Um, then there was Simone in The Premonition. Uh, that, again, was just a brief relationship. Uh, then we met Jane. Uh, she was someone he met in New York. And in a uh, day of, for thanks on Walton's Mountain, she ended up coming back to Walton's Mountain uh, to share Thanksgiving with the family. And then, of course, ultimately, there was Janet, who John Boy did marry. Jason's romances were not quite as uh, as numered um, as uh, John Boy's and, and some of the others, but initially there was Sally in the song, who he and Ben both kind of fell for, uh, but Jason had a little bit of a romance with her as they were singing together. The wonderful Erin Moran, of course, played Sally Ann. Then um, there was Betsy in the breakdown. We talked about that recently. Betsy was just... <laughs> Such a ditz, you know, a wonderful ditz, but I never quite saw her and Jason together. Then there was Vanessa, again, Linda Pearl in The Heartbreaker, who came in and again sang with Jason, but ultimately broke his heart because she was just looking for that next stepping stone to her own career and her own fame. The seashore, Lisa, the English girl who um, was there that Jason met and, and felt he had a lot in common with. They both loved music and stuff, but... She had a journey of her own she needed to go on, so that uh, that did not involve Jason going forward. And then, of course, there was Tony, who he met, and so the last couple of seasons, uh, Tony was very much a fixture in Jason's life until they married. As I looked back at Mary Ellen's history, she had far more little romances than I remembered. Uh, it started off with... Uh, of course, G.W. Haynes, who was around for some time and was her, her baseball buddy and her sort of first love. And that was always a fun relationship between her and G.W. and her teaching him to dance for the Easter story. And uh, they, were, they were buddies and sweethearts. Then there was Jamie in The Minstrel. Mary Ellen wanted to run away with him because he was exciting and she wanted a world of adventure. That one, he left and broke her heart too. Uh, then there was Kevin in The Awakening. That was Mary Ellen's first kiss and my first on-screen kiss. So that one was very special to both of us. Uh, but I was too young for Kevin and ultimately that didn't work. Then there was uh, a brief little thing with Don Millman who wanted to be a doctor. Mary Ellen wanted to be a nurse and we, we had uh, a little argument over that. But ultimately we supposedly dated, but we never saw any more of that relationship from the romance. Then there was, um, in the abdication, Todd, the very handsome, sophisticated Englishman, the uh, di assistant director on that little movie shoot that, uh, you know, he, he took Mary Ellen for a walk to Ike's to, you know, get a soda or whatever. Um, had he stuck around the mountain, they probably would have dated. But, of course, he and the movies left town, and that was the end of that relationship. Then uh, the wedding, of course. Before she married Kurt, she dated 
David Spencer. I loved the relationship between David and Mary Ellen. I thought they were well suited also. So I really enjoyed working with Bob Woods. We had a great time doing all the episodes between Mary Ellen and David Spencer. And so that one was um, lasted a while and was and was very wonderful. Um, and I loved, um, th you know, even the whole wedding story that it was so typical of Mary Ellen to get engaged to one man and then, you know, meet Kurt. And he was just, you know, interesting, fascinating to her and such a good dynamic uh, match in a lot of ways for Mary Ellen. And of course, ultimately, they married. And then uh, after we found out Kurt had supposedly been killed at Pearl Harbor, there was a few little things. There was Chuck, the other military officer who knew Kurt and came and wanted to date Mary Ellen. But Mary Ellen keeps trying to send him off with Aaron, who's not interested in him. At the end, Mary Ellen does go on her first date since the death of Kurt with Chuck. But that's the last time we see Chuck. Then um, another, the paratrooper, Eddie, comes by to deliver um, a, um, a Purple Heart or a Medal of Honor or something that I can't recall at the moment, I'm so sorry, uh, caught posthumously for Kurt. And so there's a little romance there briefly between Mary Ellen and Eddie. Um, so again, these are all, these are now post Kurt. So then after that, that was the last before in the whirlwind, we met Jonesy and they had a wonderful, playful relationship together. And he sort of brought Mary Ellen up out of her more serious side and her concerns and just kind of passed, I think finally passed Kurt. Ben had some early school relationships. Uh, there was Naomi in the triangle who he wanted to build muscles for. And <laughs> there was the boy, the other boy who was stronger, but ultimately Ben got the girl. Then with Nancy in the lie, she talked Ben into helping her go see her mother. And that ended up being um, an issue when the car, when John Boy's car was in an accident. Um, so we never really saw him and Nancy together as a couple, but we, we could tell that there was an mutual interest there. Then Sally Ann, of course, in the song, and despite Jason having Sally Ann's attention for some time, ultimately, Ben was the one that got Sally. Uh, in The Intruders, uh, Courtney was um, a short-lived romance of Ben's. Then Darlene we saw a few times in The Ferris Wheel and The Go-Getter. She worked for the used car lot where Ben sold cars. So he was, he was definitely interested in Darlene, but I think she not so much with him. Then Ruby and Patsy, that sort of triangle in Spring Fever with Ben and Jim Bob and Ruby and, and Patsy, where they sort of switched dates for a period of time. Um, but then after that, the, next, the last time, the last relationship for Ben was with Cindy and that one lasted. Mary, of course, teases about how all Aaron did was kiss and cry. So let's take a little bit of a spin through the, the tumultuous relationships of Aaron. First of all, her first love, her, her first kiss um, was with Harold in the fawn. Um, and then there was Charles in the spoilers. Um, and he made a play on Aaron. And Aaron wasn't quite sure about all of this. And ultimately, Aaron just wanted, you know, a simple, chaste relationship with Charles. Chad, the competition. Of course, Mary Ellen went after Chad too, but it soon became evident that Chad was really interested in Aaron. And of course he came back and they were going to get engaged and try and elope, but that didn't work out. And Chad ended up leaving the mountain and Aaron's heart was broken. Next up, there was Tom in the pony cart. Um, he wanted to, um, he wanted to date Aaron and, um, you know, they did. But again, we never really saw him again. <laughs> then GW. This one was the heartbreaker because after Mary Ellen dated GW, then um, as we got to the volunteer, Aaron was beginning to date GW. And uh, just as he was volunteering to go into the army, she realized she really was in love with him. And so she was absolutely heartbroken, destroyed when, when he died in the first casualty. So it was a very sad time for the whole family, for Mary Ellen because of my relationship with GW, for Aaron because she'd fallen in love with him. And of course, we no longer had David Doremus recurring on the Waltons. Always love working with David. 
Then after that, we had the strange one in the portrait with Derek Pembroke, who Aaron seemed to be fascinated with, but I'm not sure if we'd consider it really a romance. Derek was obsessed with Aaron, but not because it was Aaron, but because of his former love, Gabrielle. So that one sounds a little, I'm on the fence about that one. Um, then Ashley, Ashley Longworth Jr. or the third or whatever he was in the legacy. This would have been Mary's choice for who Aaron ended up with, but Ashley was going through difficult times. There certainly was a lot of chemistry between the two of them on and off screen, but we loved having Jonathan Frakes as a guest on the show and he looked so handsome in that uniform. So that one was definitely a kiss and a cry for Aaron and Mary. Then um, the starlet, another case of not really a romance. Aaron was a little bit taken by the whole Hollywood thing. So I think that was part of what played into her sort of brief moments with Barry Stone. But Barry, yeah, he was a bit of a player and he did lay a kiss on Aaron. And ultimately Aaron did not go to Hollywood and did not pursue anything to do with Barry Stone. Then of course, Aaron met Paul Northridge and they ultimately married. So that's Aaron's story. Jim Bob, who never ended up with his own permanent relationship, did have some romances along the way. Bobby Strom was his first crush, and of course, she wasn't interested in him, but she was very sweet to him at the end, so I think Jim Bob at least felt seen. Then uh, there was uh, Patsy Brimmer. Now, Patsy, um, he, he sort of had a relationship with for a number of episodes. Um, he took her on motorcycle rides, and um, she was his sort of date at the hero um, gathering. And then in Spring Fever, when he and Ben kind of, they dated their own girl, they dated the other's girl, they went back to their own girl. So Patsy was around for a little bit. Then later on, Jim Bob fell for Mary Frances in The Calling, but because Mary Frances chose to follow her calling and become a nun, that was the end of that for Jim Bob. Then there was Amy. He sort of had, he went out on a few dates with Amy when she was back in town, when she was grown up, but ultimately, of course, that didn't work out. Then there was Betsy in The Silver Wings, who Jim Bob fell head over heels for, but she was married and then widowed, and Jim Bob ultimately was there for her as a friend and knew that there was not going to be a romance. Then there was Kathy, who came and showed up and said she was pregnant with Jim Bob's child, but she was lying. She was not pregnant, so hard to build a relationship on a lie. So we still hold hopes that Jim Bob did find the love of his life. Last but not least, Elizabeth, because she was the youngest, she probably had fewer uh, romances, but she did have some, some young love. There was Lucas in John's Crossroads. Then there was George in the festival. Uh, there was Private Arnold Kevin in the family tree who she had a crush on. And then uh, he, she was corresponding with him, pretending to be Aaron. And then when he showed up to meet Aaron, of course he was not so pleased to find out that he'd been corresponding with a 12 year old. Uh, so that obviously went nowhere. Clarence, uh, hard to say, that's another on the fence one because uh, they were sharing the 4-H project with the pig. Um, I think Elizabeth, I think it was more of a friendship than a romance, but Clarence definitely had a crush on Elizabeth. <laughs> then there was um, Andy, the Baptist preacher, uh, who also thought that it was Aaron. Uh, so that one, <laughs> poor Elizabeth. I mean, it was just a case of too young. But then there was Drew. Initially, they just went to a dance as friends, but then discovered that Perhaps there was more there than they thought. And so Elizabeth and Drew had an on and off relationship over the seasons until ultimately they got engaged at the end of the Waltons. So there you are. Those are all the along the way romances for all of the Waltons. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.